going to do a virus slingshot 101. A lot of people ask, I'm not sure why, but they ask, how do you hold that slingshot? It's so lopsided, it doesn't make sense visually. I don't think it makes sense visually to a lot of people. It's quite simple. I hold a very high brace. I'm up this high on the forks. Right up there. These three fingers come around. This middle finger pushes on the pad. That's what this pad is for. It's very stable actually. Now, from where you would normally be positioned, your arm would be like this with the virus. So you need to turn your arm along its length to bring the forks 100% vertical and that's how you hold it you see how my arm is turned ordinarily you would be there it's turned it's an extra process really but once you get used to it well, to some people at least it makes sense. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you and you've bought a virus, plop it in your drawer, forget about it. It's no point persevering with something that doesn't work. There's no point. There's a, there's, a, there's a thousand slingshots available. Easily a thousand slingshot designs available. Here's one of them. That's the Tadpole by Mark Johnson. As you see, that's got a offset curved handle. It's not a million miles away from the curve of the virus. But nobody asks, how do you hold that? They just see it. Rather than your centre finger tucking around there with the virus, it pushes onto that pad there. But that's what makes it unique. And um, for me, it gives me uh, repeatability and stability. It's not going to work for everyone. It's an idea, as most things are. Uh, I'm not selling a magic potion. It's, uh, it's different. It's, it's definitely a start from the ground up new way of looking at things. I'll do a video now uh, showing how to aim a slingshot in general, not just the virus. 85 mil outer. My anchor for 85 is around about here in my cheek in there. And my anchor for 95 is more like on the corner of my mouth. The difference between the two is about 10 mil, 10 to 15. And the difference between 95 and 85 is 10 mil. But anyway, I look like this down the band. I check that the bands, I close my left eye personally. Some people should with both eyes open. I close my left eye. I look down the bands to see that they are, they look from my perspective as one band. There's no twist this way, or that way. It just looks like one band from above. Now I know they're in line. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I pull the pouch back to my anchor point. Uh, knowing where my anchor point is, I use the corner of my thumb. So if I do it to my cheek, I touch that, the corner of my thumb, and if it's to my mouth, where my head is more upright as well, I touch the corner of my mouth with my thumb. So. Now I'm looking to put the target on this tip. And that's also dependent on the distance. With this setup, 25 to 20 for 10 mil steel and with this band 
which is 0.6 Celtic Catty all season. Uh, she's cut 25.20. My zero will be slightly under, so I would have to hold slightly under the target at 10 meters. And I will have to hold slightly, like less than a millimetre above it at 20. And that'll make sense if you imagine how ammunition flies. It doesn't fly in a straight line. Gravity is trying to pull it down. Gravity will pull it down as fast as you drop it. No matter if it's flying forward or not. So what you're doing with a slingshot or a gun or an arrow out of a, a bow and arrow in archery or anything else, you're actually throwing the ammunition upward because it's gonna, you're shooting it upward so momentum carries it before gravity eats it. So you've got to imagine the two lines. So for me, as it's going up, meets the target at 10, goes up further at 15, come, is coming back down, meets the target again at 20. And that's what you've got to get your head around with distance and trajectory. It's not, you don't need to get into it scientifically, you just need to experiment. Once your ammunition is matched to your band and your speeds are correct, and you don't need super fast speed, people keep talking about speeds with catapults, oh, it's a super fast band. You want super fast, you want an easy pull and a reliable, consistent latex uh, that is giving you that same result every time. That's why I designed the virus, to build in yet another element where your arm locks with this particular frame. It locks in a particular way and should and well it does with me gives me shot on shot consistency which is what you want especially especially if you are shooting competitively and you're just trying to repeat hitting that 40 or 60 mil spinner at a set distance repeatability is what you want you don't want speed you want a, a reliable feel of the pouch the pressure in your fingers that's how you get it and that's how I do my shots. I know often I pull off shots and I do it in one shot. It amazes me as well. Um, sometimes I can't hit this. If I, I could try six times, if I don't hit it, I just get bored and walk away. I don't walk back and forth and try it and try it and try it. I'll, I'll stand in the same position and try it. And if I've taken three shots, that's what I put up. Sometimes I do it in one. Um, everything's going right that day. You've got the right feel. But if you're hunting, that's what you need. You need to be able to pull a catapult out of your pocket. Whack. You only get one chance. Target shooting, a little bit different. Uh, you've got a little bit more mind control to deal with you need to control your mind from drifting especially if there's people behind you and you feel nervous it's a different game all these things are different games i'm just playing i'm chilled out in the woods i'm just oh, i'll have a shot on something might as well get it on film i like watching them back myself i love watching other people's shots especially if they're filmed well and then in a nice environment in the woods or and the camera's nice and close to that target and you see it go, you see the sparks like the one I did the other day, things like this, it's brilliant. So, that's quite a long video for me. Um, bit of instruction, bit of insight. As for, let's, let's get to this as well, I do a lot of this, don't I, where I'm shooting the, like a, a bearing, a 10 mil bearing or whatever. That's focus. And the way I shoot a small target is, if I say I put it on a log or something like, uh, put a, I'm going to put a target on a log. Some distances I kind of feel, I don't count my steps as I walk away, but I kind of think it's about that, just about. And I know. Other times, if it's a big distance, I'll take a practice shot. 
at the log that I'm going to shoot the target off. And I'm seeing if I, if I'm using a decent sized steel as well, 10 or 11 mil, you can see it. You can't see a six or a seven. Uh, not a 20 meters, it's, it's a bit of a flash, whereas I can see this and I can make microscopic adjustments at my end. And I can go, I'm just aiming just above it and I'm just clipping the top of the log. Right, aim just above and it's just skipping over. If it's just skipping over and there's a bearing in the way, I might did it. Um, that's how I do it. Anyhow, have a couple of practice shots like that, then go and set the camera up, then set the target up, then walk away. Rather than set something up and let people say walk back and forth until it's done. I don't, I know. I know that is done with um, so-called trick shots. It's not a trick shot, it's, uh, it's just a shot. It's having a crack, having a go. That's how I do things. And um, I hope you found this useful. It's a long video for me, by the way, if you can see this little sort of indentation in this frame. This is my personal frame. And um, when Nick Hegarty was making these for me, because he's the, the man who made them, I, I assume you know, out of HDP for me, I put an order in with him, paid him X amount of money, he sent them to me. He said, oh, there's an extra one in there. I tried to make one from an offcut, hoping that the, this mark would come out. He said, but it's there. It's like a, a like a, a drill mark or something. I said, yeah, great. So I banded that, band, and this is mine, and uh, always will be. It doesn't go all the way through that hole, it's just there, like a little indent. So that's what that's about. Now you've got a, the full story. Right, guys. Keep shooting, and um, keep enjoying it. And if you don't enjoy it, put it away. Come back to it in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Uh, it, one of the best, one of the best games, one of the best sports, call it where you will, you can play. Um, take your mind off the world. Listen to some birds singing, I'm listening to a crow singing now, it's not so pretty. And I, I'm going to go and try and pull off a shot now, so I'll get the GoPro out for that. And I'll see you soon. Over and out.